Cat Cannabis Show on New Earth Television. Welcome to the Cat Cannabis Show. I am your host, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, and this is a live video podcast. So if you're just listening to it on one of the other platforms, you can go to my Cat Cannabis Show on Facebook and watch the shows there. Watch them live every Tuesday night. Um, So... For those of you new to my show, I am a multi-award winning author and many of my books are available on my website. In fact, all of my books are available on my website. You can get there by Googling thequeenofdreams.com or putting it into Google search or my name, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, and that's K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-O-K-E-E-F-E. K-A-N-A-B-O-S. And I'm very involved in helping all writers become published authors. And today I've helped about 40 authors in obtaining their dream. So with that note, I want to tell you it is last call for submissions to Crappy to Happy, the second book in the Sacred Stories series published by Sacred Stories Publishing. If you're interested in being in a book, if you're a writer and you need to be published or you're a published writer and you need some extra uh, push for your books or PR, go to sacredstoriespublishing.com and click on book projects. James Redfield, author of The Celestine Prophecies, is writing the foreword for this book. So what is quantum spirituality? Um, How can we get some or know if we've already got some? Our guest tonight is Peter Canova. He's celebrated and a multi-award winning author of the First Souls Trilogy. And you may have seen him on one of my previous shows when he spoke about his book, Pope Annalisa, that won 24 Awards. Yes, you heard me right. 24 awards. Well, Peter has made the switch from fiction, writing novels, to nonfiction, which is a big step. And he's here tonight to tell us about his newest book, which is nonfiction, and it's called Quantum Spirituality. You can learn more about Peter on his website. PeterCanova.com, and that's P-E-T-E-R-C-A-N-O-V-A.com. So welcome to the show, Peter Canova. Thank you. It's good to be with you. So uh, the underpinning of your book concerns ancient spirituality and quantum physics. Can you tell us how this came about and what message you're trying to convey with this, your latest book? Well, to answer that question, I kind of have to go back into a little past history, and I know this is a relatively short interview, so I'm going to give the abbreviated Writer's Digest version, but um, I uh, experienced back some decades ago, uh, I had some very vivid experiences that uh, led me to find out that I was a very accurate medical intuitive And uh, I started experiencing all these different manifestations of psychic phenomena, uh, premonitions, uh, remote viewing, uh, psychokinesis, which is uh, bending objects like spoons and things like that. Um, Stuff that really kind of blew my mind because I I came from a family that was a fairly uh, driven uh, business background family. So nothing like this had ever really been in my experience. Uh, Being a Capricorn, it, it wasn't just enough for me to uh, display these abilities, but I wanted to understand what it was all about. So I started studying uh, about it, and uh, the first um, subject matter I delved into was ancient spirituality. It seemed like a logical place to go, but it still seemed like there was a missing component here. So uh, I started reading in quantum physics. And why quantum physics? Well, of all the branches of science, when you come to think about it, quantum physics has to do with the creation and the operation of the material world that we live in. And spirit and matter are intimately connected. In fact, the reality is that all matter derives from energy, which is a spiritual form of intelligent energy. And uh, all matter will eventually dissolve back into that same energy. So I took up quantum physics as another uh, source of uh, a source of studying. And lo and behold, I found some very, very startling and interesting things. Um, 
particularly in the ancient Gnostic spiritual texts. And the, the Gnostics were the ancient mystical Christians who were pretty much eradicated when the uh, Roman Empire got a hold of the Christian church and started molding it in its image. And they didn't have room for these crazy mystics, and they pretty much um, obliterated them, which is unfortunate for us. But when I started reading these Gnostic texts, I realized that they were talking two and 3,000 years ago about some of the most advanced theories that quantum physics has related to the creation of the universe, uh, how we may have gotten here as human beings and so forth. And uh, when I saw this um, nexus, when I saw this creation, I said, wow, this information is really valuable to people because it really has to do with what the real world is about, not the world of appearances, but the world that lies beneath appearances, that controls those appearances. And exposing that hidden reality was uh, really uh, one of the major um, impetuses that I had in writing the books that I did. So I started off with a trilogy of nonfiction books called the First Souls Trilogy. Uh, you mentioned Pope Annalisa. That was book number one. There's also The Thirteenth Disciple and The Light of Distant Suns. And these books are about the first spirit intelligence or the first souls to incarnate into the material world. And it traces their lives over different critical epochs of human history when humanity is either going to move forward and evolve or fall backward uh, and, uh, you know, into... Uh, well, let's say more barbaric uh, forms of existence, and um, the book, as you as you mentioned, it, it, the trilogy won twenty four major literary awards, did uh, very well. Um, once I finished that, I decided that you know it would really be interesting to write a nonfiction book that encompasses both the science and the spirituality behind the trilogy in other words the underpinning of the trilogy the themes and everything derived from all this information that i had compiled over decades about spirituality and quantum physics so um i decided to write a non-fiction book which logically is called quantum spirituality uh it's not published yet um i have an agent and uh, we uh, we hope to get that published soon but one way or another uh, it will probably be out there during the course of the next 12 months um but um, essentially, if I could sum it up in a nutshell, what all my body of work is really saying, what I've discovered is there is a master consciousness that permeates all creation and it forms everything from an electron to a rock to our human minds. And there really is no objective reality out there. Reality and the perception of the 3D objects that we see around us is really an electromagnetic projection by this conscious energy that we experience that we experience as images uh, in our physical brain. So really we live in kind of a simulated reality. Uh, the matrix is a perfect example of how this theme of simulated reality is catching on. Incidentally, Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla, uh, is very much into uh, this whole idea and in investigating it. But uh, our solid world, isn't really solid, but it rather acts as a quantum holographic projection. Now, if that sounds a little too far out for you, just think of this. You already know, probably from your basic work and or understanding of physics from school or whatever, that what we think of as solid objects are actually made from invisible moving particles that are constantly in motion, and they have a tremendous amount of space between them. In fact, matter is really 99% light and space, and only about 1% of actual physical stuff that we call matter. So right off the bat, we know there's some disconnect and some illusion going on here because it doesn't appear that way to us, but that's the way that it really is. So um, really, uh, there's some other issues that are discussed in, in quantum spirituality. One of the main themes I tackle there is that uh, the whole business of scientific materialism versus the growing understanding and nature of what consciousness is about. Our typical science uh, curriculums for generations now have really told us that matter came first and everything else derived from matter. So somehow human beings with our complex brains and our feelings and everything else and perceptions and consciousness were supposedly developed from some form of inorganic primordial matter 
that somehow became more complex and eventually formed life, only they've never been able to come remotely cr close to proving that proposition. On the other hand, if you understand that consciousness came first and essentially matter and everything else derived from this consciousness, it explains a tremendous amount of paradoxes that we find in the scientific world. We don't have time to go into all that here, but basically it solves most of the puzzling paradoxes that science runs up against when they're trying to understand the nature of reality, the nature of matter, and the nature of energy. So that's another theme that I tackle in the book. And uh, really, I'm trying to say that there is a third way out there. In other words, it's, it's, it's not a question of either strict materialism um, or uh, kind of um, out there sort of new age type of spiritualism. But there is a third way that encompasses both science and spiritual wisdom. And that is through a reading of these ancient texts and an understanding of the advanced theories of quantum physics, which has outstripped most of the other sciences in terms of its understanding of how the world operates. And when you take those two streams together, it forms this third way that I'm talking about that indicates some really amazing things about the world we live in, the nature of reality, and our place as human beings in it. So if you ask me what my motivation was, I can sum it up in about one sentence. I'm trying to expose the principles that govern the hidden reality that makes our world to enhance the possibility for people to have extraordinary experiences, like the kind of experiences I had that heighten our intuition, that heighten our premonitions, that let us know when we're in danger, when we shouldn't know that type of information. There's numerous ways that these extraordinary experiences can advance our lives. And in order to get to that point, I'm trying to sort of expose signs along a pathway that leads to those possibilities. Wow. You know, um, your book, Pump It, and Annalisa, I read it, and, it, and it's really an amazing book. And it has a lot of, of quantum spirituality actually in it as well, even though it's written as a novel. Um, I mean, that book would, would make a great movie. Have you ever thought of having that either turned into a movie or a TV series? Actually, um, I had a movie deal at one point uh, with the producers that did the um, Oscar-winning Black Swan. Uh, movie and uh, change courses because there is so much content. These are epic books and, uh, and dealing with epic themes. There was so much content there that it really couldn't have been contained into a two and a half hour movie. So I pulled out of that deal and I switched gears and now we're in hot pursuit of uh, making a TV series on one of the streaming networks like uh, Amazon or Netflix or Apple. Uh, and uh, we're making some headway there. I hope within the next six months to have uh, some uh, some news on that. But I will say that the books themselves have really caught on in Hollywood. They, 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 there's a lot of traction in Hollywood uh, about uh, Pope Annalisa and these other books. It's um, uh, a lot of people around the industry are buzzing about it and know about it. So we'll have to see if we can translate that into something concrete. And hopefully one day we'll see something on TV. Well, thank you so much, Peter Canova, for being on the show with us tonight. And uh, for, for those of you who have not seen uh, the Cat Cannabis Show before, you can go to my Facebook page, Cat Cannabis Show, and uh, watch Peter Canova there again or watch any of my previous shows. So uh, remember, uh, a big thank you to our producer, Rachel, and also remember that everyone dreams, but some dreams save lives. So until next time, sweet dreams, everybody. Good night.